Okay, let's take a look at this first challenge after the Python Maths module. This is the remainder calculator. So you should have got two, vari two inputs of two numbers. You need to make sure you use different names for the different variables or you'll save one over the top. And you should have got them as integers. So it's int input. The whole input statement is then inside. Notice there are double brackets at the end here. That's one to close the int bracket and one to close the input bracket. Now, if you actually click on a bracket, notice that it highlights its partner. So if you're ever not sure whether you're missing a bracket, click on the one that you think has a partner and you'll see whether it lights up that it's got another partner or not. Once you've got them as integers, we're just going to use a variable and we're going to use floor division to calculate the integer part of the number. And then we're gonna have another variable called remainder and we're going to use modulus to calculate the remainder and then I'm just going to use an F string to print the both of them out. So if we have a quick little look at the example here, uh, I'll run it, I'll put in nine and five, and you can see it says one remainder four. I'll just run it again with some different numbers so you can see that it definitely works. So we'll go seven and three, and you can see it says two remainder one. So that one actually works. Now, it is actually possible to do the calculations on the print line. But sometimes your programs will make more sense if you use more lines. So in this case, I actually think it's better to store those values first, then print them, than to have a very messy line with a lot of things happening in it. Okay, let's move on to the other challenge that came from the Python Maths unit. So in this second Python Maths challenge, uh, we've got the discount calculator. So this time you had to get two numbers one a float and one an integer. This was a little bit cheeky of me because I've only put the instructions there in the uh, comments rather than having shown you in the video how to get a float specifically. But float input rather than int input and that will convert the input to a float. So once we've got the two different things and something else to point out at this point is notice that I'm using meaningful names for my variables all the time. It's always a good thing to do. It just makes your program much easier to understand. So then when I calculate the discount price, I'm just following the formula that was there. So price times 100 minus the discount over 100. Now, the rules of order of operations still apply when you're using a computer. So it is essential that you put the brackets around this or else the 100 minus discount would not be done first. Then I'm just using an F string to print out the discounted price is. And then the extension bit was to format it to two decimal places, which I've done here by using the dot to F notation after the colon uh, in my F string. Now, the other thing to think about here is that I've asked you to round it to two decimal places. And I've said, don't worry if the numbers generate a long decimal, if you're not rounding off, if you don't know how to do the extension bit. We will look at this in a coming video. So don't worry if you're wanting to know how to round, we will be rounding off in a couple of videos time. All right, that's it for this one. Next up, watch the video on string handling, and then we'll have some exercises on string handling.